All right. Welcome to the Rise Up Podcast. I'm your host, Jonah Mitchell. And on this show, I do my best to help simplify everything that goes in the weight loss process, help you get out of your own way, help everything make sense so that you can ultimately ultimately rise up to your potential without all the BS that is out there. Um, and I just I just want to thank you again so much for taking the time to, to listen in to the episode today. This one's going to be a fun one. This is what I love really, really helping you know, connect the dots for people. Actually, you know what? I can't even say that because I love all my episodes that I get to connect dots um, and make it make sense because there's a lot of common uh, misunderstandings that end up making this process a lot harder than it needs to be. And I just want to put set, uh, shed some light on it. Hopefully you'll start to make some connections in your own journey um, and start seeing and identifying some patterns that may be holding you back that you weren't aware of before, right? I always want to start off by saying it's never, it's not, re- if you are truly unaware or you don't know what to look for, it's not your fault, right? There's a lot of things out there that perpetuate ideas that we should, that their uh, results should uh, have to happen a certain way, or they should look like, uh, should look like something that just isn't realistic for us and what we have going on. Um, and so I just want to make sure that, uh, or I want to do my best to help you identify those patterns and make it your own, right? So uh, we're just going to jump right in. In helping you under, understand the three things that are that you're doing that are self sabotaging your results, right? And um, I, these aren't in like any order, but these are just like the common three that uh, really, really make it harder. And the third one is really, really my favorite. So stick around for for that one. Um, it's actually going to be a throwback for some of you who've been listening to me for uh, quite some time. But the first and for the first way that you're self sabotaging your results is uh, you're a bit too impatient. This is very, very simple, right? I don't really have a lot uh, to deep dive into this one. Uh, maybe I always say that, but I can go down a rabbit hole with anything. But your lack of patience is a form of self sabotage because you do not give yourself the reminders or the perspectives of how long it took uh, took you to gain the weight that you gained, right? And just because we want that we want the physical results quicker, we want, you know, 3, 6, 12 month transformations, right? Well, do we, did you ever stop to consider how long it took you to gain the results or gain the gain the weight, right? If you look back and it's it's a lifelong struggle, right? And so it's been a lifelong struggle and you're in your forties, right? Thirties, anything. It's over a decade, right? If it's if over, that's a long time, right? For you to go that mu- uh, that amount of time with this struggle, to expect that to go away in a few months and half a year, right? It's not impossible, but if it's genuinely like, you know, you can't go a- longer than a few weeks before you get frustrated and want to give up, right? That's just genuinely unfair, right? That's unfair to you and what you want to accomplish because, you know, everyone is so, uh, they don't lack the, uh, or they want that instant gratification of like, this is what I accomplished in this amount of time and I deserve praise. I, I deserve to feel amazing. You do, you do. But if that's perpetuating the same struggles you have, right? Mentally, if you constantly compare yourself or you constantly want things to happen faster than they should, and you always feel like you're chasing, 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 right? Getting to your results faster isn't going to make it go away. You're always going to find something to feel insecure about. You're always going to find something to, um, to, to try and change and shape. If you don't just say, Hey, it's going to take however long it takes. And that's okay. Right? Because we only notice what what's important to us and you know if you go went your whole life and you know you struggle with your weight eventually you got used to it right you it's important to you right because but because it's such a constant stress a constant pain your brain will eventually just kind of numb it right you'll you'll maybe you'll avoid a mirror maybe you'll you'll avoid the clothes that don't fit anymore just so that you don't open that that wound again in your mind right but then when you flip a switch to say, okay, now I'm going to invest in myself. Now I'm going to dedicate this 90 days, this 90 days to, to go all in and you don't really give yourself a realistic timeline, right? Say, okay, if three months, I'm not my goal, it's not a bad thing, right? If three months, I'm better off than where I started today. And that could look, uh, that could look in a, that could look like a lot of different things. It does it doesn't just mean the scale, right? If you stayed consistent for 90 days and previously you've never stayed consistent longer than a few weeks that's progress that's you being better than where you were when you started that's you giving yourself some time some patience to just do the work right it's not an on and off switch right and even if you were perfect right 
for a full 90 days, I, and that's, I tell my clients all the time, I cannot guarantee your results because sometimes that's just not how it works. Right. Yeah. We can starve yourself. We can, we can cut your carbs. We can, we can drastically increase your cardio, but if you don't plan on doing those things for the rest of your life, right. Well, those temporary, those results are going to be temporary. Right. And that's going to, again, perpetuate the problems that you face, right. That you're going to continue to face no matter how long, you, especially if you struggle with it for a very long time, if you don't give yourself or expand your timeline or just give yourself permission to let it take longer, you're going to find reasons to not keep showing up. You're going to find reasons to feel like a failure. You're going to find reasons to feel shitty again. And that is not worth it. Do you want to spend the rest of your life dealing with that? Right? Maybe it sucks you know, struggling through your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s. I work with people in their 60s. They struggle with it. But do you want to be in your 90s and still having the same struggles, right? Does 90, this is a great question I love to ask my clients. Does 90-year-old you care how long it took for you to get to your results as long as you got there? And every most of the time, most of the time, people are like, no, 90-year-old would, 90, 90-year-old uh, you wouldn't care, right? Because, by that time, we're 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 almost we're not long for this world. <laughs> we're lucky to get to that age, right? Yeah, I know. I want. I I don't say this to make it seem like you cannot accomplish a lot in a short amount of time, right? But I want you to be realistic with yourself and give yourself permission to take longer, because when you compare six months to you struggling for multiple decades, however long it is, it's really not that much time. Right. If you and if you really just dedicate to showing up the best way you can consistently, you can accomplish a lot more than you think. And I just made a, a a thread about this uh, um, when, with one of my clients who who was confused by the statement. It's like, um, oh, uh, what did he say? Uh, if you go fast, it takes longer. Um, let me just I'm going to look it up really quick while I'm talking. Uh, the faster you go, the longer it takes. There, there it is. And that sounds like an oxymoron. Right. Well, if you expect fast results, you're trying to go all in all the time. You don't understand how to incorporate your lifestyle um, into your results. Yeah, you're trying to go fast and then you're going to stumble. You're going to hit your face and you're not going to know how to pick back up. You're going to feel guilty. You're going to feel ashamed. You're going to feel frustrated. You're going to feel like a failure and you're going to stay down. You're not going to get back up. And and life never slows down. Ne- life never stops throwing punches. Right. You, there's never a great time for you to be fully dedicated, like how you think you should, right? So you need to understand how to give yourself more time to understand what is going on in your day-to-day, what can you stick with and show up the best way you can, right? And that type of resilience will build so that as you create results and you expand your your timeline a little bit more, you, you become a little bit more patient, you learn more about yourself than you ever really thought you could, and you stop getting in your own way. You stop sabotaging yourself because you lack the patience, right? Give yourself, allow yourself to have the time, right? And when you struggle with that, this is when all, when my clients are in that in that headspace, they're they're not they don't think or their their uh their little voice in their head is telling them that they should have more results, they should be making more, more progress. I always ask them, hey, when did we meet? And they're always like, you know, a couple months ago, cool. How long have you been struggling with this mentality or the lack of results in your life? And this is usually after we identify the big struggle that's kind of getting in their way. And they're like, oh, my whole life or, you know, five years or, or like, okay, cool. It's been two months compared to five years compared to your whole life, right? And then we, we immediately remind them of all of the things that they have accomplished, right? You've stayed consistent this long. You feel better. Your bloating's gone, Right? Maybe the scale isn't reflecting that right now, but you are doing the things necessary for you. And as long as you keep showing up, the results will come. No matter how frustrating it is, no matter how uh, annoying it is, right? as long as you don't quit on yourself because you're too impatient, you will guarantee results. You will find the solutions that you're looking for. But if you're too impatient, if you're constantly finding any reason to stop trying because it's not happening quick enough, right? That's, that's, you're, you're making it, you're guaranteeing that you won't have the, the comfort that you want, right? So this is the thing that I want you to start paying attention to and start thinking like 90 year old you, right? 90 year old you wants you to live the best life that you can, right? Doesn't want to live a life of pain, regret, and all the things that we are terrified of, right? But, and that's kind of like, it, it, you know, it's kind of a, 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 
uh, I don't want to say morbid thought, but like if we just, again, if we just kind of go in that state of mind, right, it would help out, just give us a little bit of a reminder that we're in this for the long haul. This is not just a, a simple three month solution and you're just free, no matter how many infomercials are out there, right? There's probably going to be more work than you realize. So you should, should just be okay, should be open to broadening your timeline, right? And if it takes a little bit longer than you'd like, right, but it guarantees that you're going to keep results, in the long run, that I mean, your goals get uh, the, your goals come faster than if you were just going to keep like pushing, 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 and you know, the second life gets a little bit inconvenient, you give up, right? So, first one, you're too impatient, slow down, right? Give yourself the time, give yourself the space to learn and grow and learn how to fit your life into your results and not your life revolve around your results because many people realize that's not fun, it's not sustainable, and it makes you feel worse. All right, moving on to number two. Number two, this one is a bit harder to identify a lot of times, but still, it's a it's a form of self sabotage that most people aren't aware of, um, and it's the fact that you're too inaccurate. <clears throat> so many people jump to calories and macros and all this stuff, and they listen to my fitness pal or they they watch a YouTube video or listen to a podcast. Say this is how many calories you should be eating, and this is my client. You know, it sounds just like you, and you should be eating fifteen hundred calories. You should be eating twenty five hundred calories. This much protein, blah 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 blah. Right, all that on paper, those things can work on paper, <laughs> but what really gets in the way of certain calorie amounts actually working is our inconsistencies, our discrepancies, right? Usual common discrepancies, li- not accounting for liquid calories, eating out a lot, a lot, right? And uh, weighing inaccurately. So if you're logging in raw chicken versus cooked chicken, right? Not paying attention to um, the the item that pops up in your app and realizing that that's not the exact item, even though it says like, you know, Brussels sprouts roasted with olive oil in my fitness pal, but it adds an extra 14 grams of fat uh, or uh, 14 grams of uh, like carbs out of nowhere, right? Brussels sprouts still have carbs in them, but there's an extra 14. Well, now that affects your numbers and now you stick with it and you stick with your calorie target for three weeks and you don't see any change at all in your scale weight, but you have a lot of those discrepancies like sprinkled in throughout your tracking right? Or you're eating out or you're not counting for your liquid calories, like all these things, you may you may be tracking a certain number in my fitness pal. But if you're not losing weight, you're not in a calorie deficit. If you're tracking 1500 calories, and you're not losing a weight, right? Or if you're everyone's favorite number, if you're tracking 1200 calories, and you're not losing weight, well, there might be areas that you're getting more calories into your diet. And there's a lot of there's a lot of information out there about, you know, metabolic adaptation and eating too little and your body holds on to fat. Those things can definitely happen. But if like I was talking to a client of mine not too long ago who's got a decent amount of weight to lose and she was in this mindset like she can't eat too little because then her body's going to go into starvation mode and hold on to weight. But, you know, if we look at people in uh, underdeveloped countries who don't have food that's very abundant, are those people obese are those people overweight you know a lot of people no <laughs> they're like they're if food isn't abundant you know they're very skinny right and that's not because um they're the, it's mainly because our body if we limit calorie intake it's going to utilize the fuel on our body right body fat is a source of energy and if we're consuming calories in a maintenance, it's not going to tap into the energy that's stored on our body. It's just going to continue to burn the energy that we consume, right? So when we get in, when we get into a deficit, our body will eventually start letting go of weight. Now, I digress, or I digress. I want to remind you, right? There are definitely certain people who do not, who will experience some metabolic adaptation, meaning that you're, if you're constantly, chronically under eating, some increased hunger, poor energy. Um, you know, poor performance in the gym, poor sleep. There's a lot of things that that can go wrong. But if you're somebody who's got a good amount of weight to lose, right, those metabolic adaptations are probably not going to happen as quickly um, because you have a lot of energy on your body that your bot that your body can use. Yes, it's uncomfortable to be in a deficit because a lot of people don't uh, aren't used to just feeling hungry. Um, but again. I'm going down a different rabbit hole. (laughs) I'm explaining body fat loss and weight loss and not how inaccuracy get in the way. But I really want you to understand, like, 
if you're not losing weight, you're not in a deficit, right? And if you're tracking a certain number that told you this is how much weight you need to lo- eat to lose one pound, two pounds a week, right? And you're not losing that weight, then there's probably some areas that you're adding ca- extra calories into your diet unintentionally, right? It's not your fault, right? If you are not aware, right? A lot of people don't understand there's a difference between raw versus cooked, right? And that's okay. People, a lot of people don't understand all the options that they have available to them on their tracking apps. So they just pick one willy nilly and don't pay attention to what's actually uh, that what they're actually logging. So there can be a lot of hidden calories that make it difficult for you to be as accurate as you think you are, which, which uh, affects our relationship with the numbers, right? It's like, I eat 1200 calories, I eat 1500 calories, I don't lose weight. It's like, okay, are you actually eating those numbers? Are you truly aware of every single calorie, right? And there's a lot of people that would say yes, but I just challenge them to start paying attention, right? Start paying attention to a little bit more and start, and this is like, if I'm working with a client and this is something that we're we're struggling with, you know, I start having, hey, take photos of your food. Let's just confirm the information. Let me look at your portions as well so that we can start deducting if there's any issues or any more discrepancies that they're not aware of. Right, because we always go back to that philosophy, that, that understanding that if we're not losing weight, um, and and we feel like we're doing everything right, then there is still something that is getting in the way, and we have to we have to find it, right. And again, you're not being a- inaccurate because you're trying to. You're unknowingly self sabotaging because people aren't aware because you're not aware. <laughs> So my job is to help identify those discrepancies and pay attention to how you feel, because if we go in a deficit and you start feeling miserable, then there's then we have rights to say or a right to say, okay, let's take a break for a little while. Let's reestablish biofeedback. This doesn't mean regain weight because there's a maintenance amount of calories that we can eat and not lose or gain any weight, right? And then once you feel better, we can go back into a deficit after we identify the accuracy issues. Right. But again, this comes from uh, like this. I put this as the second one because tracking calories usually uh, is way harder if like you have uh, struggles with your relationship with your food, struggles with the relationship with numbers, struggle with the relationship with yourself in general, with all the mental stuff like like being impatient earlier. Right. If we don't address those things first, the numbers make it worse. So. Once we do get to the numbers and we start paying attention to accuracy, right? And it's not because you're a bad person, you're a failure. It's like, hey, no, this is a very common mistake. And we're going to identify the mistake so you feel more capable to make the adjustment necessary, make the educated adjustment, right? Because too many people see a lack of progress and make drastic changes, right? Oh, I'm going to cut a thousand calories because I'm not losing weight fast enough. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Right. I, 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 that's, a, that's, that's definitely not sustainable. You're not going to feel great about that. And that's going to really mess with your relationship with those numbers if that's your automatic reaction. Right. But once we get, once we identify the patterns or uh, uh, the discrepancies, right, you end up seeing how much you can eat and lose weight. Like I, I was just talking, I'm working with a client right now who's down over 20 pounds. Right. She's a small woman, right? Five one. She's eating two thousand calories right now and losing weight consistently. Like she has an active lifestyle. She's on her feet at work. She's doing doing CrossFit a lot, like three to, uh, three to five times a week, right? She's she's burning a lot of calories, but she's also been as accurate. Well, she's identified her accuracy issues uh, in the very beginning, and she just continues to see how much she can eat and lose weight. Right. So when we get accurate, we get a much better understanding and we learn that we there's we're not doomed to eat twelve hundred calories. Right. But if we don't address the inaccuracies first, we feel trapped, we feel confined and makes it harder to see results. And this is why you may be unknowingly sabotaging yourself. I want to make it very clear. I want to bring it to light so you can start paying attention, start identifying the patterns and start to feel or, or see where in your own journey the the dots might not be connecting. Right. So. Let's move on to my third one. If you stuck around this long, I appreciate you, but this is definitely my favorite one, right? And this is what I built, tried to build my business off of. This is what I kind of t- tried to turn my podcast into. Uh, <laughs> you're the third one. The third way that you're self-sabotaging is you're overcomplicating it. There is no, if your plan, if your journey is just the most difficult thing you have to do to stay consistent, well, you're not going to stay consistent. Because life is going to keep punching you. Life is going to keep trying to find a way to knock you off, right? It's not going to care about your goals. So if you have a very complicated plan, very strict plan, it doesn't accommodate for your life, your family, your uh, your vacations or anything, well, 
that's that overcomplication is going to um, essentially bite you in the ass. You're not going to see the results that you want because you're not going to be able to stay consistent, right? Or if you're trying to do everything all at once, if you think it has to be this certain way, like I have to meal prep, I have to hit the gym this this time of day, right? But it makes your life harder, right? If you, if it's difficult for you to show up to the gym as often as you think you have to, if you if you keep trying to meal prep once a week and you end up being in the kitchen for eight hours, uh, eight hours at a time, and you're sitting there super annoyed and frustrated, like this is not worth it, right? Again, you're overcomplicating it. Right. Or my favorite one, uh, um, some of my clients there, they get to a point where they start seeing physical results and consistently. And we've addressed all the discrepancies. We address the relationship with their their mindset and they're like continuing seeing progress. They're like, OK, what's next? What's the next thing I got to do? What's the next thing I got to do? It's like, no, you don't have to do anything else. You're doing it. You're doing the thing. Stop trying to overcomplicate it. Stop trying to change something. Just let yourself be. Right, because we need to prove to our body and our brain that we can just stay consistent. That things can just like once once we find ways to incorporate our life into our goals, right, and we find that consistency and we start earning the the results that we desire, right. Once we do that, we don't need to change much. As long as you feel good, right, you're not dying of hunger, your performance in the gym and your energy all great, your sleep is great, right, and you continue to see steady progress. Cool. I love getting to that point with my clients. Don't change a thing. It's my favorite saying, <laughs> right? It take it do, it doesn't happen for everybody right away. It takes time until we identify the thing that may be holding them back, right? But once it's there, don't fix what is not broken. Just keep the ball rolling. And as long as and as long as we continue to monitor how you feel and you continue to report back that you feel good, right? You don't feel like like you're on cloud nine, you know, like you're super motivated and everything's all sunshine and rainbows and you don't feel super miserable. Like this is really hard to do. Like you just can do it, right? You kind of feel just normal and you get the results. Well, that's what sustainability is. That's what maintenance looks like. Cause we even went, when you get to your goal, right? You're going to want to keep doing what you did to keep those results. And if it's something that is just simple, right? One of my clients who ended with me, you know, or ended her one-on-one program. Now she's, now she's in her, her maintenance, Right. She's just doing all the things that help her feel better. And she's continuing to see progress. I told her like like for at least six weeks before we ended her program, she was just like, how's everything going? We would chit chat back and forth. It's like, great. Uh, How do you feel? She's like, great. Cool. Keep doing the thing. She keeps seeing progress. And now we're almost a full month of her ending. She's still seeing progress because she just keeps showing up to the things that are simple that help her that she can do that helps her feel better. She stopped overcomplicating it, stopped doing things that didn't work for her life, started doing things that helped her feel better, that helped her stay consistent, right? That's that's the, that's the equation. Let go of what makes your life harder, understand what is necessary uh, uh, to see physical results and work uh, work those subtle changes, right? I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm calling them subtle because subtle, subtle changes done over time have massive impacts. But people think they're too small. It's like, oh, if I make this, if I make this uh, small step, I'm not going to see progress fast enough. It's like, oh, well, not really. If you make a subtle change and that gives you more mental capacity to deal with the stressors in life, well, then you're going to find more things that you can do on your own. It's going to help you stay consistent. It's going to help you continue to feel better. And then you're going to start building a giant list of proof of what you can do instead of everything that you can't do. Right? That's the shift. We want to be focusing on everything that we can do that helps us feel better. Because when we only focus on everything that we can't do, right, well, our brain gets what it looks for. It's going to tell you everything else that you can't do, everything else that you're not doing, everything else that you should feel guilty about, feel shitty about. But if we really want to change our lives and get physical results, right, We need to prove to ourselves that we can focus on things that are simple, that are manageable, but have massive return on investment that give you more for your, for your time than you thinking you have to dedicate your entire life around your results. That overcomplicates this. Simple is repeatable. Simple is repeatable. That's what we want. You need to repeatedly show up for yourself and do things that help you continue to feel better no matter what's going on in your life. And the only way to do that is to simplify. If your plan is super overcomplicated, we're both going to be wasting each other's time because you're not going to feel consistent and you're going to feel guilty or you're going to feel like a failure. I'm going to feel like a piece of shit because I'm not giving you any results. And I hate that. I hate not being able to give somebody results. 
as a as a coach who who you know I don't say this often who considers him, himself a pretty good coach uh I find that I like I it hurt physically hurts me when I cannot give clients uh results and I do my best to not get to that point because I want them I want you to be successful so I do this podcast I just want to help you however I can because I've learned all these fucking lessons the hard way I'm sorry I'm you know what? if you listen to me for a long time I cuss a lot you know this if you're new apologize <laughs> <laughs> but this is something I'm genuinely passionate about right I've been and I've done the 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 I I've been the impatient one I definitely knew I was not accurate when I first started tracking uh, but I didn't know I knew well I didn't know that but looking back I was not very accurate at all so I was confused why I wasn't losing weight eating 1500 calories um and I definitely overcomplicated what I thought I had to do I thought I had to work out twice a day and barely eat anything eat and eat uh, and barely eat carbs to to get in the best shape of my life and that was wrong it, it made my life harder I felt miserable you know man it, it, you don't know you you you, you don't you, how do I say this? I knew something was wrong when I could barely get sleep, when my libido was completely gone, when my strength was basically nil, I could barely pick up a 35 pound dumbbell, uh, when my appetite was gone. But in my head, I kept saying that this is what has to happen to feel better. And that is completely ass backwards. <laughs> We have to feel better first. We have to work on these things first. Stop overcomplicating it. Stop uh, or identify the discrepancies and the inaccuracies and stop being impatient. That will help you feel better. And when you feel better, you're going to stay more consistent because you're going to like what you're doing. And when you like what you're doing and you're more consistent, you create results that last. It's the, it's the, uh, it's my favorite part about my job is just paying it, making these connections that, oh, that's why I've been struggling. It's been right there this whole time. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times we know this stuff, but we really, really have a hard time remembering. Right. So this is an episode full of a lot of one liners because we need to be reminded more than we need to be taught. Right. I'm not just spe- when I'm working with a client, I'm not just sitting here as a as Google of nutrition and fitness. Yeah, that's sometimes nutrition information is helpful. But a lot of times I'm reminding my clients of what they said they wanted and then helping them understand where it fits in like the thermodynamics of weight loss, right? But really there are behaviors that make it harder for them to do the things necessary. I'm here to help you connect the dots so that you can start to live your life the way that you want to and have the results that last. So I hope this helps. I hope this gives you something to think about. And if it does, let me know. Leave me a review. Right. I really appreciate that. Like I said, the the growth of the podcast has been amazing. I really, really appreciate every one of you who who takes the time to to listen to me rant. And I hope you learn something valuable. And if if I do, if it if it helps shift a perspective, if you learn something new, I would really appreciate if you just shared it with at least one person. Right. So one person that I get to help. Because even if I can't speak to you directly, but I even make a small impact on you on your journey, I um it means the world to me. It means the absolute world to me. Um, and if you like what I say, if you like how I teach, you know, all the rest of my stuff is down below in the show notes. Um, and I just really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to, to help you wherever you're at right now. And if you ever do have direct questions for me, feel free to reach out to me on any of my social media. Again, that's all linked down below. Um, and I'll do my best to help, help out, help you out wherever you're at. But, um, yeah, I'm going to end this one here today. I hope you have a great rest of your day or, or night, whenever you're listening to, and, uh, I'll see you in the next one.